Yeah. Go ahead. Who the hell are you? Figured my rugged good looks would make that obvious. Kurt Russell is an American film and television actor who still delights fans with his work after more than 60 years of career. Many movies with his participation have become iconic, yet the film awards avoid him. In this video, we'll discuss how this charming artist career began and what he is doing now. I guess that's very fortunate for me. How Kurt Russell Lives and How Much He Earns Kurt Vogel Russell was born in a creative family on March 17, 1951 in Springfield, Massachusetts. His father, Bing Russell, was a famous actor who played in many American TV series. His mother, Louise Crone, is a dancer who gave up her career to raise children. Our hero has three sisters, Jamie, Jody, and Jill. Russell is of German, English, Scottish, and Irish ancestry. When Russell was a child, the family moved to the Los Angeles suburb of Thousand Oaks, where he spent his childhood. The future actor attended a local school but was never a diligent student. After all, he began acting on television from an early age. At six, Kurt made his screen debut, appearing in the Western series Sugarfoot. Russell's father took him to the set and contributed to him getting the role. Interestingly, television actor Bing Russell did not welcome watching television at home. Children were only allowed to watch some shows and baseball games. Moreover, even as an adult, Kurt does not approve of such a pastime. He does not like what they broadcast. Next, the young actor appeared in such projects as Dennis the Menace, The Eleventh Hour, The Virginian, The Fugitive, The Travels of Jamie McPheeters, Guns of Diablo, The Man from Uncle, Gilligan's Island, Lost in Space, The FBI, and many others. One of Kurt's most notable works at that time was a role in the musical It Happened at the World's Fair, in which the famous Elvis Presley played the lead role. Russell appeared in a small but hilarious episode. According to the plot, Elvis's character asks a teenager to hit him on the leg to get to the hospital where the nurse he likes works. This seemingly insignificant role became iconic in Kurt's career. At 13, the boy starred in a commercial for a blaster of the Mattel toy company. In 1966, the Walt Disney Company signed a 10-year contract with Kurt. Their first joint movie was the drama Follow Me Boys. Most film critics agree that Russell was the best Disney star of the 70s, and Walt Disney himself highly appreciated the performance of our hero. He described Russell as a 15-year-old boy with a great acting future ahead of him. Walt even turned to Kurt for advice about his projects, as he trusted him very much. Interesting fact, the producer mentioned the teenager's name in his mysterious note. At the end of 1966, right before his death, Disney wrote his last two words on a piece of paper, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, boy. And that gets me. Yeah, it gets me too. Biographers could not unravel the message, however, they agreed it was about a new project where Russell would be in the lead role. In the next few years, the young actor starred in such movies as Mosby's Marauders, The One and Only, Genuine Original Family Band, and The Horse in the Gray Flannel Suit. Despite his acting successes, Kurt never dreamed of an acting career. His passion has always been baseball. He came to his auditions only because he hoped to meet his baseball idols, who, according to the script, were supposed to appear on the screen. In his childhood, Russell decided to become an athlete and devoted all his free time from filming and studying to training and playing in the junior high school league. Surprisingly, his father, a successful actor, had the same dream. In his youth, Bing Russell was a professional baseball player, and in later life, he owned a little-known team, the Portland Mavericks. After graduation, Kurt was in the Army. From 1969 to 1975, the young man was in the California Air National Guard. During this period, he appeared in such movies as The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes, The Barefoot Executive, Pools Parade, Now You See Him, Now You Don't, Charlie and the Angel, and Super Dad. He also starred in the TV series Love American Style, Room 222, and many others. 
After the end of the service, Russell planned to build a baseball career. However, in 1973, he suffered a shoulder injury that put an end to his dream. The most upsetting thing is that our guy got it not on the field but during a vacation with friends. One evening, Kurt went to an entertainment venue to celebrate another victory, injuring his hand when playing air hockey. During the examination, the doctor asked, are you also an actor? Russell replied, yes, but after receiving the results, the doctor slated, now you are only an actor. This was one of the worst days in the life of the young man. By the way, Kurt's nephew, Matt Franco, fulfilled the family's dream and became a professional baseball player. Since then, our hero has focused all his attention on his acting career. Russell treats filming in movies as an ordinary job and, unlike many actors, does not chase fame and does not like public events. He also prefers not to watch films with his participation. In 1975, Kurt appeared in the TV series Harry O and Police Story and starred in the movies Search for the Gods, The Strongest Man in the World, and The Deadly Tower. In the latter, Russell played a student, Charles Whitman, who suffered from mental disorders and became one of the first mass shooters. Still can't take that up on the observation deck. Well, you go on down. Why don't you come back? I don't know if your life means anything to you. Next, his filmography was enriched by the movies The Quest, The Longest Drive, The Captive, The Longest Drive 2, and Christmas Miracle in Caulfield, USA. He also appeared in the TV series The Quest and an episode of Hawaii 5 In 1979, Kurt played the famous singer in the biographical drama Elvis. One should note that his father, Bing Russell, played the role of Vernon Presley, Elvis's father. Film critics pointed out not only the external similarity of Russell and Presley, but also how skillfully the actor conveyed the tragedy of the great artist's life. Subsequently, the picture was named one of the best works dedicated to the king of rock and roll. For his work in the film, Kurt received worldwide fame and got a nomination for an Emmy Award. You, uh, you weren't any good singers around here, were you? You? Yeah, I don't sing. What kind of singer are you? All kinds. Also, later in life, the actor voiced Presley in the movie Forrest Gump, but was not listed in the credits. On the set of Elvis, Russell met actress Susan Hubley, who played Presley's wife, Priscilla. Screen feelings turned into real ones, and they started dating. Soon, the couple officially married, and in 1980, they had a son, Boston. In the same year, the actor starred in the drama Amber Waves and the comedy Used Cars. In the latter, he played a salesman who dreams of becoming a state senator thanks to his lying skills. Russell did a great job with his comedic role. In 1981, Kurt voiced the character of the cartoon The Fox and the Hound and starred in the science fiction action movie called Escape from New York. In the film, the actor played a prisoner nicknamed Snake Plissken, who must rescue the kidnapped U.S. president. Get a new president. We're still at war, Pliskin. We need him alive. I don't give a f about your war or your president. During the preparation for filming, Russell adhered to a strict diet and performed a set of exercises to gain muscles. By the way, Kurt himself came up with the feature for his character, a black eye patch. On the set, the man tried to stay in character even in between takes, but he preferred to remove the patch at such moments since its long-term wearing negatively affected his vision. In the image of a charismatic criminal, Russell instantly captivated the audience, and the film became iconic and entered the 100 best science fiction films of all time. The actor considers this work one of the most successful in his career. The following year, Kurt starred in the horror movie The Thing. There, he played the pilot RJ. Initially, the film was a box office failure, barely managing to recoup the money spent. However, when re-released on videotape, it became a huge success. Today, it is among the top 100 best horror films of the 20th century. My God, what was happening to him? I think if it had more time to finish, it would have looked and sounded and acted just like Bennings. I don't know what you're saying. That was one of those things out there, trying to imitate him, Gary. In 1983, the actor appeared in the biographical drama Silkwood, starring Meryl Streep. In the movie, Russell played the courageous but, at the same time, soulful character Drew Stevens. This role brought our hero a Golden Globe nomination. Thelma says she's going to get cancer. If anybody's going to get cancer around here, it's going to be me, Dolly Trash Bags. Anybody around here is going to get cancer, we're all going to get in the same year, Kurt divorced his wife and his son, Boston, stayed with him. 
In 1984, our hero starred in the military drama Swing Shift as Lucky Lockhart, who becomes a hostage of a love triangle. Goldie Hawn, who played his sweetheart in the film, became his real beloved during filming. However, it wasn't the first time they worked together. In 1968, they starred in the musical The One and Only, Genuine, Original Family Band. At that time, Russell was 16 years old and Goldie was 22. Although she thought Kurt was charming, a romantic relationship was out of the question. Since then, 16 years have passed, during which the actress was married twice and gave birth to two children. The lovers almost immediately moved in together. However, they have not yet registered a relationship because they consider marriage an absolute formality. The man immediately got along with Coley's children, Oliver and Kate. As adults, they warmly remember their childhood and call Russell a real father. In turn, Goldie got along with the actor's son, Boston. They all lived together as a big and friendly family. Two years later, Kurt and Goldie had a son, Wyatt. Meanwhile, the actor appeared in the thriller The Mean Season, the drama The Best of Times, and the fantasy action movie Big Trouble in Little China. In the latter, he played a truck driver. Jack, however, the studio considered Jack Nicholson and Clint Eastwood for this role. Kurt was not interested in the project as he doubted that he would play this role well. However, after the director's persuasion, he liked the idea of playing a character with so many flaws. Before filming began, Russell regularly went for a run for two months to lose weight. During the filming process, he became seriously ill with the flu, so in some scenes, the sweat on his body is real, caused by a high body temperature. Initially, the picture wasn't successful with the public, but over time, it became iconic. Here and prove in the meantime, pay up 1,148 bucks times two. Yeah, I don't have that kind of money, Jack. Uh, I didn't hear that, Wang. Hey, I'm just a poor old Chinese boy, you know? Yeah, you own a restaurant. That's a hell of a lot more than me. Oh, yeah. People say this movie was too strange for that time, so in the past, the audience did not understand it. In 1987, Kurt and Goldie starred in the romantic comedy Overboard. He played a father with many children and she played a spoiled billionaire who eventually became the mother of his sons. By the way, Russell's father, Bing, also appeared in the film. The actors were improvising so the shooting was fun, and during the breaks, Kurt and Goldie often made barbecue for their colleagues. The couple's children were also there. Moreover, their youngest son even took his first steps there. The picture was among the best works of our hero, and fans are still happy to watch it. Job was not done to my satisfaction. Oh, I got news for you, lady. No job will ever be done to your satisfaction. Well, that's quite enough. Now just get out. Hey, no problem. Just pay me the 600 bucks you owe me and I'm gone. Captain Carl, start up the engine. It is worth mentioning that during the same period, Kurt was considered for the lead roles in the movie Highlander and Lethal Weapon, but in the end, Christopher Lambert starred in the first one and Mel Gibson in the second one. In 1988, Russell appeared in the thriller Tequila Sunrise as a policeman forced to choose between friendship, love, and professional honor. The following year, the audience saw Kurt in the movies Winter People and Tango and Cash. In the latter, his partner on the set was Sylvester Stallone. The actors played cops who tried to prove to each other that that only one is the best. Despite mixed reviews from critics, the film has become one of the funniest police comedies of the decade. Look at that, flat top. You're speaking like a native already. What is this? English, 101. No. Oh. However, for the actor, the shooting was a complete disappointment. According to the script, he had to change into a woman, and Russell did badly at this part. He even received a Golden Raspberry nomination for Worst Supporting Actress. In 1991, Kurt appeared as a firefighter in the action movie Backdraft, and to prepare for this role, he joined firefighters at real calls. The following year, Russell appeared in the thriller Unlawful Entry. In this movie, the understudies performed all the love scenes. The man also starred in the lead role of the comedy Captain Ron. Much of Kurt's hero's clothing was from his personal wardrobe. In addition, the actor came up with many of Ron's characteristic features. For example, walking in swimming trunks and a hoarse voice. Russell only objected to drinking alcohol, but they said it would suit the character, so he agreed. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. Hang on. Hang on. Don't worry, kitty. This could happen to anybody. Hang on, boss. Always stand clear of the ladder, boss. In 1993, Kurt starred in the western Tombstone, where he also took part in the editing. The following year, he appeared in the action movie Stargate, playing Colonel Jack O'Neill. For this role, our hero earned $7 million. Your job here is to realign the Stargate. Can you do that or not? 
I can't. You can't or you won't. I can decipher the symbols on the Stargate, but I need an order of alignment. Next, Russell starred in the movie Executive Decision with a fee of $7.5 million and an escape from L.A. for which he received $10 million. In the latter, the actor again appeared as the criminal snake. The project was in development for about 15 years and appeared on screens thanks to Kurt's perseverance. The man rewrote the initially failed script and produced the film. After all, the role of Snake Plissken is his favorite. In 1997, Russell starred in the thriller Breakdown, which was very popular with the public. Interesting fact, they provided our actor with a helicopter so he could return home after set to spend the night with his family. His fee for the project amounted to $15 million. The following year, Kurt starred in the fantasy action movie Soldier. The shooting of this picture was postponed because Russell had to get himself in perfect physical shape. To do this, the man was training daily for a year and a half. By the way, Wyatt, Kurt's son, appeared in this movie as a young character of our hero. For the role in this film, our hero earned $15 million. But one soldier gets 17. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill them all, sir. In 2001, Kurt appeared in such movies as 3,000 Miles to Graceland and Vanilla Sky. He agreed to star in the latter even without reading the script. His fee was $5 million. Part where we parry and joust, get to know each other bit by bit. No, no can do. We're going to have to skip that because you've been charged with murder. Next, Russell's filmography was enriched by the movies Interstate 60, Dark Blue, Jiminy Glick and Lala Wood, and Miracle. Interestingly, during the filming of the latter, Kurt agreed to cut his fee so that almost a thousand extras could receive a proper hot meal instead of field rations. During the same year, Russell received the Saturn Award for Career Achievements. In 2005, our hero appeared in a superhero role in the comedy Sky High. The actor had a special suit with a cooling system that saved him from the heat, but his partner Kelly Preston was not as lucky. Her suit was too tight. Kurt also appeared in the drama Dreamer with young actress Dakota Fanning. After filming, he bought the girl a real horse. In 2006, Russell played in the action movie Poseidon and the following year in Grindhouse Death Proof. In Death Proof by Quentin Tarantino, he played a maniac stuntman. Fair lady, your chariot awaits. You've been eavesdropping? <laughs> eavesdropping and can't help it here. I think I belong in the latter category. Then, the audiences saw Kurt in such movies as Touchback, The Art of the Steel, Bone Tomahawk, and Furious 7. In the latter, he played Mr. Nobody, a mysterious CIA agent. At first, this role was offered to Denzel Washington, but he refused. Russell also starred in the western The Hateful Eight, which appeared on screens in 2015. In the film, the actor played bounty hunter John Ruth, nicknamed The Hangman, and this role became one of the brightest in his career. Now, uh, Daisy, you want us to work out a signal system of communication. When I elbow you real hard in the face, that means shut up. You got it? However, during the filming, an unpleasant situation occurred. According to the script, Kurt's character had to smash the guitar the convicted Daisy played, and for greater realism, director Quentin Tarantino agreed to rent an expensive instrument. The actress was supposed to play a real guitar, but it was necessary to break a fake one. But in the process of filming, everyone was so enthusiastic that they didn't even notice how the rare guitar shattered into splinters. As a result, he had to pay a penalty of $40,000. In 2016, Russell starred in the movie Deepwater Horizon, where his stepdaughter Kate had one of the roles. In 2017, Kurt appeared in the image of Ego, Peter Quill's father, in the superhero movie Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2. It broke my heart to put that tumor in her head. What? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. <laughs> he also returned to his role of Mr. Nobody in the action movie The Fate of the Furious. Also in 2017, both Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn won their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Their children and their close friends Reese Witherspoon and Quentin Tarantino came to support the actors on this day. In 2018, our hero became Santa Claus in the comedy The Christmas Chronicles. The actor insisted that Goldie should play Mrs. Claus. Russell's stepson Oliver also appeared in the movie. 
You look so... different. Why? Because I'm not a big fat slob? No, no, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, that's okay, Kate. Guess it's understandable. I mean, who can eat millions of cookies in one night and not get fat, right? Well, I can. The following year, Kurt's filmography was enriched by the thriller Crypto and the comedy drama Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. In the latter, he had a dual role, Randy and the narrator. In 2020, Russell starred in the movie The Christmas Chronicles 2. The following year, he voiced Ego in the animated series What If? Also, he again appeared as Mr. Nobody in F9. You can lose an asset at any time. Bullet, knife, wire. But I never thought I'd lose her to love. Kurt remains a sought-after actor. At the moment, Russell and his youngest son, Wyatt, are involved in filming the TV series Monarch Legacy of Monsters. Also, Kurt will appear in a documentary about actor Michael Parks. Now, the celebrity's net worth is around $100 million. Interesting fact, according to statistics, for every word uttered in the film, our hero earns $5,682, and among Hollywood actors, he's only second to Tom Cruise, who receives $7,091. Russell earns money not only from film royalties but also from entrepreneurial activities. In 2008, he launched his wine label Gogi Wines, naming it after one of his childhood nicknames. The Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir that company produces cost from $50 to $75 a bottle. The wine is available in 100 upscale restaurants across America. Also, he already opened many wine boutiques. The actor follows every production stage and takes a direct part in it. It is also known that Kurt and Goldie sell beef produced at the ranch in Colorado. In addition, Russell is an avid hunter and an ardent supporter of gun rights. A man devotes his free time to his family. His union with Goldie Hawn is considered one of the strongest in Hollywood. The couple already has many grandchildren who often stay with their grandparents. By the way, his stepdaughter Kate named her son Russell as a sign of respect for Kurt. The artist owns several properties. In the early 1990s, he and Goldie bought a luxury villa in Malibu. The house has an area of 4,300 square feet. The apartment includes several bedrooms, living rooms, a kitchen, a home theater, and outdoor terraces with recreation areas. They owned the villa for about 20 years until selling it for $9.5 million in 2013. In 1997, the couple purchased a penthouse in Manhattan for $3.8 million and decorated it in the style of Southeast Asia with an Indian arch, a Buddha sculpture, and a lot of draperies. In 2002, they bought an old mansion in Vancouver, Canada. The family lived there for three years while their youngest son, Wyatt, played hockey. In 2005, they sold the property. The couple also owned an estate on the lakeshore in Ontario for some time. In 2003, Russell and Hahn became owners of a $3.6 million house in Palm Desert, California. Eight years later, they bought another mansion nearby in Palm Springs for $5.7 million. In 2004, the lovers purchased an estate in Los Angeles in the Pacific Palisades area for $4.1 million. The house has five bedrooms, five bathrooms, a living room, a kitchen dining room, a gym, a swimming pool, a patio, and landscaped gardens. In 2019, they sold the property for $6.9 million. In Los Angeles, the couple has another house where their large family often gathers for the holidays. But still, Kurt and Goldie consider their home to be a ranch in Aspen, Colorado, where their children grew up. According to his son, Oliver, many items in this house have remained untouched for 30 years, as the family cherishes their memories very much. Russell was spotted driving an Audi A8, and his Chevrolet Silverado pickup truck was auctioned as a collectible car. There is also information that his car collection also includes such models as the Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, Shelby Mustang GT500, Porsche 911S, and Mercedes 280SL, Ferrari California, and Ford F-150 Raptor. He also owns a Harley-Davidson motorcycle. The artist has a professional private pilot license and can fly some planes. He was inspired to do this by his grandfather, who was a pilot. Kurt Russell's filmography includes all sorts of genres action, comedies, dramas, and melodramas. Which movie with Kurt Russell do you like the most? Be good. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.